All right, guys, got a new project coming up right now. Actually, it's the first one in the new shop. Um, I got a show this weekend, three days in uh, Fredonia, New York, Fredonia Farm Festival. If you're in West New York this weekend, stop by and say hi. Um, at each of these shows, I like to bring in at least one new product so I can do a little market research on it. I've, ha I've actually wanted to make one of these for myself for a long time, but I'm going to make a fro. But not a, t a traditional fro, a it's something smaller and, and modified. Um, burning wood at home, very often I need to split up some kindling. Um, a fro would be just, a, I, I use a knife and baton very often, so a fro would be very handy for that. The problem with making something like this is, you know, you know I really want to make tools, I want or not tools, I want to make useful things, things that people actually can use every day or use often. Um, but I want to make them in a way that, that they can afford to buy them, or at least a lot of people can afford to buy them. So to make a fro, to forge weld the eye, to draw out this, you know, 12, 13, 14 inch long thing, put a wooden handle on it, turn down the handle, finish it, you know, it's, it's tomahawk by the time you get done with it, the same amount of time. So, I mean, who's going to spend $150 for a, for a kindling splitter, you know what I'm saying? So I want to try to go with something, typically, at least in my experience, I don't need 13, 14 inches or 12 inches of, of splitting space. I need four, right? I, got, I already have split wood. I just need to split up a little, a, a couple pieces of kindling. So I'm looking, I think I'm going to do something with like a four inch splitting edge. And then I don't want to waste, it's not that I don't want to waste time, but I don't want to, I don't want to build that value into the product, the, 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 the hours into the product of turning the handle and, and forge welding the eye and that kind of stuff. Not that I don't mind the challenge, but I'm again, I'm trying to make this stuff affordable and useful maybe it'll stop you know somebody from picking something up at a store uh, anyway this is what we're going to use shocker huh we're going to use a railroad spike because i think i have enough steel to do that i think i have enough steel to get a good four inch blade on this side and then i can just go ahead and build the handle right into right r as part of the blade i'll put a pineapple twist on it twisted handle maybe a little bit of a, an interesting shape and then drop a, a splitting blade off of this the, my only concern with doing that number one is i don't have a whole lot of steel but i think i can pull that off number two is when you're batoning the uh, the fro w would you get a lot of shock in the handle so i'm going to see what i can do to, to, uh, to prevent that but that's the plan was do a typical handle like it would. It's actually going to be a knife, with a, you know, a flatter edge on it is ultimately what it's going to be. I don't like taking knives to uh, the craft shows. A lot of play, a lot of the shows don't let you do that. So this will give me a chance to show off some of the the knife attributes and create a useful tool that I think I can sell. Maybe if I can get this thing done in an hour, uh, you know, to an hour and a half, I can sell this for fifty bucks. And I think maybe somebody would spend fifty dollars on a useful tool like that. So that's the project. A little modified kindling, 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 whatever, fro, stay tuned. <clears throat> Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is just upset this end. I'm not really going to upset it, I just want to square it off. I don't need that point on there. Um, for a railroad spike knife, that, that taper there actually works in handy because it gives you a nice narrow point. But in this case, I'm going to want it squared on the end anyway. So again, I'm not upsetting it for size, I'm just upsetting it to get that steel squared off. Again, this is the first time I've made one of these. I can't guarantee that that's a requirement. I might have been able to pull that back before, but uh, at this point now i got at least a square end on there. Um, we'll turn around and get the handle made. <clears throat> Alright, I had a question on YouTube about somebody trying to, to work with the railroad spikes and, and flattening out the head a little bit and having the edges rolled over. So I'll, I'll address that now because I want to clean this up a little. Uh, if you're going to flatten that head out, the best thing to do, quite literally, is just take a little bit of time and round that edge over. Uh, depending on the shape of the spike, it might take a little bit more or a little bit less force. But you round that edge over like this, and I'm at an angle here. Um, and then as you start pounding that in, I can't do that with this one, but as you start driving that in, it's not going to roll as much. And you might have to go back and do that a couple of times. All right, just keep working on that edge to, uh, to keep it rounded. It won't roll on you. In this case, I'm going to finish this off like I do a, a, a basic knife. So I'm just going to put some shape on it to save me a little time on the grinder. Nothing, nothing uh, crazy here. That's <clears> it. That's all I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is just kind of square this handle off. I'm going to stretch it a little bit so that I can have a little extra steel for that blade. At the same time squaring it off, 
so I'm only working about a eh, little more than half. Because I really don't need the full size of that handle in this case. So if I can get some more length, I'm going to do that. So just by doing that, actually I'm going to come back and do a little bit more up here towards the, the end. Uh, I picked up a quarter inch, maybe a half inch of length. It all helps. The trick here is to do that without messing up the head. So very careful hammer strokes here. Can be done. See, we got a little more head here than here, but I guess we'll have to fix that with the burn. <clears throat> right. We'll go ahead and put the twist in. I'm going to put a, a pineapple twist, or my version of the pineapple twist, down here. First thing I'm going to do is heat it up, twist it one full turn, flatten that off, put in some center lines, twist it back a half turn. So watch that. Now, it's not very often I go back and add some footage, but before you guys all jump on my case, when I did the uh, pineapple twist, I did my version of it which uh, I like, it has like a rope effect, but also the bumps. The proper way, which I did these the proper way, uh, if you notice, there's two sets of lines here, as opposed to just the one set of line. Um, so as I'm explaining this, I tell you to start off by putting the twist in. If you want the two lines, a proper pine pineapple twist, you uh, start off by doing a center line on all four sides, then you put your first full twist in, then you flatten as I show in the video, put your uh, center line down through the flattened area and then do a half twist back. So it's your call, that's I would believe what you guys would call a proper pineapple twist. This is Chandler's version of it. Either one's beautiful. Alright, if you get a good enough heat on this, you can make this all happen, well, three quarters of it anyway, in one heat. So again, I'm guessing how much handle I want versus how much I don't want. Put my twist in, full twist. Make sure you're relatively squared. It's not bad. Off from here. So I'm in your way. Off from here, we go to the anvil. I'm losing heat, but we're going to try to make it happen for you. Alright, after that full twist, we're just going to gently flatten those twists out on all four sides. Remember, you're going to hammer on. As I'm hammering here, I'm also hammering on the bottom, so I don't want to go all the way on the first hammer until I'm all the way around. Alright, once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and if you have enough heat, put your center line in. If you don't, then you're going back to the forge. Doesn't take much. Yeah, I'm bouncing around too much. Really. That's the way it is. All right, like I said, if, the sun, if all the moons of Jupiter line up, you can go ahead and do this cutting on that same heat. But today we didn't get it. That's good. Doesn't have to be extremely deep, just deep enough to leave its mark. One more. All right. Yeah, a little bit more on that. It rolled on me. There we go. Good. So for that pineapple twist, at least the way I do it anyway. Full turn, flatten it just slightly, and then throw a line in there. Back to the fire. 
All right, from there we're going to go back one half twist. So we're putting this back in the vise. I twist it this way. Now I'm going to just come back one half turn like that. Wire brush that up. You get a nice pineapple twist. That's the way I do it anyway. While I still have my heat, I want this handle to be curved back a little just to give it a little bit more character from the blade. Not much. Plus, perhaps it will offer a little protection from the hand. Like an aiming point as they're batoning. With that hand at a, at a bit of a curve, I think it'll look it'll look better. Or it'll be more it'll be safer. So there we have it. I think everything's straight. Looks good, looks good. Can you see it? Of course that'll shine up really nice. Alright, let's put the blade in. Here's a shot of the new forge in action. Listen to me. As fancy as all this stuff is, well, some of the stuff is that I have in the new shop. If you ever see me do something that you don't think you can do on an outside bucket forge or a brake jump forge, call me on it and I'll and I'll make sure that I redo it so you can. Uh, if I do a project that uh, that requires a power hammer or something like that, I'm gonna let you know ahead of time. The stuff that I'm going to do, the stuff that I really try to do are things that, that I would do on my bucket forge back home, if that's where I still was. Alright, now I need to know, or decide what I'm going to do with this blade now. I think I want to give myself a little bit of a narrowed section in here, and then just flatten that blade out. up just about the right length that I want there. Um, actually, forget about the narrow section. I'm just going to go ahead and draw, draw this blade out. So I'm going to flatten a little bit. I'm going to pick up another half inch to three quarters of an inch in length. And then everything I can get in, in uh, depth is where I'm at. Alright, we're going to go for just a little bit of extra length. Not much. Alright. And then we're just going to spend the entire time stretching it out. Using the cross chain hammer to do that. this drop in now uh, because I want that in there I don't want it to be a fracture point so I'm not going to go for the sharpest point on my anvil I'm going to go for something a little bit rounded and without messing up my pineapple twist I'm going to bring that back as best I can again it's a tricky thing to do without messing up your twist but I want to drop that I wish I had a narrower spot to do it but I don't
just that little bit of drop will release the tension here as I, as I draw out this blade. I think I'm alright. I got a little bit of a bump here. But I think I'm okay with that. Let's, let's draw this thing out some more. time I got to keep my time in control because I need to be able to produce this product and sell it affordably. All right, I'm going to start worrying about cleaning this blade up now because I don't know for sure what kind of finish I want on it. So I'm going to work on, you probably can't see that, I'm just going to try to bring that end back a little without blowing everything out of the water. And it's not easy doing it this way, but at least you can see it happening. It doesn't take a whole lot. I want it close enough where the grind, oops, the grinder can take care of the rest of it. That's what I'm after. So it helped a little bit. a little. You know, again, I'm really hoping to get out to here. Just I want it to look a little more dramatic. Let's see what we got going on here. We got a lot of drawing. Here. Let's work on this. So I think with this one, I wish I had a little more width, it's still going to do the trick. Uh, I want to leave a nice, it's a nice broad spine on here if I can. I think what I should have done is upset that a lot more. Maybe brought it back to like only two inches long. And that way, uh, um, I think it would, because I picked up, as I drew this out, I picked up, I probably stretched it out an inch that way. That I didn't really want to do. Uh, and I might have been able to control that a little bit more, but I didn't. Uh, so I'm gonna up next one I do I'm gonna upset that, but I'm still happy with it. Let me go. Right, clean this let's up see what we do about just getting this sucker cleaned up best we can, straightened up, get rid of the hammer marks, get that edge out straight. Even thickness, so when I come to grinding, I'm not going to have a problem there. And a 
rough on that side, but I'll live with it. Alright. Got a bit of a sway in the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'm not exactly happy with it, but I think I'll be okay. I think it's close enough. Alright, let me um, normalize this once. Check the square. It's not bad. Railroad hard right here with the railroad spike twist because your twist throws the, the blade off a little bit. But I got a nice even spine down there. I got a pretty darn even thickness on the blade. And again, this isn't going to be razor sharp. It's just going to be sharp enough. And the next thing is, once you draw out that blade, how bad did your handle mess up? Oops, you're down here. Which it looks good. But very often the handle twist is wrong. Um, I got a little bit of a cockeye going on there, which I'm just going to heat that part up and twist it back that way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's not the way I like it. It's the, the extra step, it's another 5-10 minutes in the project that sucks, but I got to put a bit of a twist on it and bring it back. Hey, this isn't the most you know? exciting thing to videotape, but I'm sure this happens to a lot of railroad spike workers because by the time you get that blade drawn out, things are different. I just want you to see that it is attainable. Go back into the vise, look over here so you can see, put my a my little bit more of a turn on it, get that cockeyedness out of there, and sometimes you cheat a little, sometimes you put a little more twist than it really wants, because again, when you twisted that handle, you automatically made it go to one side, I mean it's just, it's just the nature of putting a twist on something, one side's going to be thicker than the other, you're pulling from one to go to the other, but um, I'm not happy yet. <laughs> Don't you wish it was? I want a little bit more this way. When somebody looks at this, all I want them to do is say, wow, what's a cool idea? I don't want them to be looking at it and saying um, anything about the shape or form other than, wow, that's a cool idea. Now, I need to move that whole handle over a little bit. So in that case, I'm going to grab the wooden handle. Not much. Because if I yank on the top, all I'm going to do is put a curve in it. Oh yeah, I'm much happier than that now. So that looks pretty darn good. Can you see it? There it is. So we're going to uh, normalize this. All right, while that thing's in the um, forge, heating up to, to, to allow it to normalize a little. Um, see, I got exactly well, an hour and three minutes now into this. This is the first one, so that let's say I can shave ten minutes. It you know ten minutes off of that. Um, that's the. I'll tell you, it takes a lot of work to, to make this happen. To get that done in an hour, I think is pretty pretty good. Um, but I'm not ground yet. I got to figure out what I'm going to do about hardening. I think I will harden it, but it's going to be tempered pretty well too, because it's going to be whacked on. So I'm not really worried about a cutting edge as much as I'm worried about durability for it being uh, being pounded on. So dang, you know, I'm trying to make this thing, I'm trying to make this thing in a fifty dollar range, which for me, if I could get an hour's worth of work in and make fifty bucks off off of it then I'm making okay money by the time you take all the overhead out um, for me to do an hour and a half and make 50 makes it a little bit tough so anyway just thought I'd let you know about an hour in alright we got the first grit done uh, I don't know I think I'm using 80 grit I, I can't remember what my rough grit is um, I really wanted to get I wanted to go mirror on this which which I still might but there's still some marks in there but I'm not going to take any way any way any more steel for the sake of vanity I'm not going to uh, to sacrifice the strength of the knife but uh, or the Fro is what it is. So I clean up this end very, very well uh, for for this grit. I don't do anything with the handle. I wire brush it and then I hit the polisher with it. It's a nice rough handle. Fits my hand well now. So I'm going to go up one more grit. Uh, so again, that step is, is semi-useless because I'm going to mess everything up. But what it does do is it allows me to, to first of all, the handle is going to be relatively clean. So that that's a good thing to do. Um, but as far as the blade goes, it allows me to see where the imperfections are. So I'd rather have to go back up a grit and clean something up now than once this thing's hardened. But uh, another thing you saw me do is I, I worked in this area on the spine and on this tip. I wanted that rounded a little bit. Normally I don't do that with a knife. I leave nice square corners so it'll work on a ferro rod. But uh, this thing looks really nice. It really does. Alright, we're going to go harden it. All right, she's up to temperature. We'll go ahead and give her a quench. Before it's too late, we'll take a peek to make sure she's straight, which she is. 
finish the quench. That's the way we do it. I'll tell you, I really, I'll have to do some research on this one. I, I'm thinking this thing doesn't even need to be hardened. But, uh, wait a minute, here we are. Um, I just don't, I don't want it too freaking hard. Um, I, I just don't want it too hard that uh, there's a possibility it might break. I mean, this is, look at that spine. I doubt it's going to break for any reason, but. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wire brush this and then we're going to do a variable temper. I'll blue up the handle, or the spine rather. Alright, I'll show you a trick I use for my variable tempers. Uh, I mount the, uh, the blade into a vise and that way the vise acts as a heat sink. I don't get the heat on the, uh, the edge of the blade. Uh, and I sit there and just blue up that spine. It takes a while, but I like the way it works. It leaves that edge pretty protected. tempered more than I would ever temper a knife that's for sure but I uh, like I said I want this pretty shock proof I'll go ahead and quench this but you see what I ended up with let me see if, let me see if I can get you in the light here All right. so this is why I do it in the vise you see that freaking golden right on the edge about halfway up right about where I had it in the vise and I was able to get super blue on the edge so I mean Again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, right guys? But to me, that makes sense. It looks like a really good temper for a, str a strong spine. So that's what we're going with. Uh, I'm going to clean this thing up. We're going back to the grinder and the wire brush. And uh, when I get to the point where I'm ready to polish it, uh, I'll bring you back. All right, so I got this thing back to the way it was. A little bit farther than um, <clears throat> before I uh, hardened it. I went right down to 400 grit on the, which is the worn out 400. It's probably more like six or 800. Uh, on the blade and uh, spine and handle. So what I like to do is when I'm making a, a knife, or in this case, this particular thing, uh, this fro, uh, if I'm trying to go for mirror, I don't put the, the cutting edge on until I have the mirror. That way, if I lose this thing in the uh, in the uh, buffing wheel, uh, <clears throat> I'm not getting that. I hope. Anyway, that's the plan. So we're gonna go on the buffing wheel. Here's what I get off the sander. So I'm down to like 400, a very worn 400, probably more like 6 to 800 grit. Here we go to the buffer. All right, normally on the buffer I go with two wheels on green and then two wheels on uh, uh, white compound. As you can see, there's the first first one. Not bad, huh? Alright guys, so after the buffing wheel, that's how I get it. So, two greens, two whites. Softer wheel, right down to a luster wheel at the end. So I put a heck of a lot more time into this than I wanted to. I'm not sure this particular tool needs to be quite so shiny, but I'll tell you what you gotta watch out for. Uh, once you, if you decide to go mirror, every single blemish is gonna show up. So you either have to accept the fact that people have to accept this is handmade and it's not perfect or you need to be very very careful on your grinding so alright so this thing is done except it ain't got no edge so I'm going to go ahead and put the final edge in 
Let's see how it works. I hate to mess up the finish a little, but we're gonna give it a go. All right, let's test this sucker. I guess got a piece of an old, I uh, don't know, sledgehammer handle, so it's not really a heavy, a heavy um, baton. But let's see how it works. It's a good length. I like that. It was a pretty big chop that I was trying to do. Oh yeah. See, this is a good way to make killing for starting a fire. I like it. It's safe. It isn't super sharp. It's got a good, the, the handle, the grip is actually very good on it. Yep, I like it. Perfect. Redwood Spike Pro. All right, so there it is. We just saw it work. It works pretty good. If you take a look at the edge, hopefully we can focus on that. I mean, of course, no effect whatsoever to the edge and remarkably not even to the finish. Uh, you see blemishes in there, but that's my grinding and forging. So uh, no scratching at all and uh, no effect on the edge. Very, very cool. I like the product. I think it's a good, useful tool. Um, hopefully I can figure out how to get it down to less than, uh, well, to get it down to an hour. I don't mind spending a full hour on it. It's a lot of forging and a lot of cleanup uh, for an hour. So this is definitely prettier than, than uh, what the final product might be. Uh, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to learn to burn through these a little bit quicker. But. All right, I interrupt this normally terminated video to give you an update. I went ahead and forged four more of them. It took me exactly two hours to forge them. So that's, they still need to be rough ground cleaned up and everything. But 30 minutes each for forging. I, I think I can get these in, in, under around an hour or somewhere near an hour. So that's a heck of a lot of hammering. But anyway, there's an update. Four more in two hours. Anyway, thanks for watching. There's a project uh, anybody can do. Get yourself a railroad spike, and uh, we didn't use anything fancy. The grinder's fancy, but dude, you guys, you guys could use an uh, angle grinder on this to get the mirror. I'll tell you what, an angle grinder with a and, and then a sanding wheel, right? When you you grind it and then you hit that sanding wheel, you put that on the buffer, you'll get a mirror. I guarantee it. You'll get these lines right like I have even off of my grinder because I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can for you um, but uh, you'll you'll be able to get a mirror on it that is a party thing all right thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one ciao